What's happening guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the uh, Sanglucci Options Training Webinar. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to get over the hurdle, all right? And everybody knows what I'm talking about, this hurdle. The hurdle of churning your account and at the same time, even if you're profitable, making the hurdle into the next realm and possibly making it a full-time job, you know, getting a higher p and all that kind of stuff. We are going to address that today. But before we get into that, I want to make sure you guys know who we are. So Luchi obviously started off as one trader, Luchi himself who is here, um, and pretty much has grown into a giant brand where uh, we are just option slingers. Obviously, we, uh, we operate with a decent amount of cash in these accounts, and um, at the same time, we want to educate. We want to tell people about how options are traded. Uh, obviously, we want to show the sexiest P&Ls. At the same time, we want to make sure that you guys understand that these things are achievable um, relatively through smaller accounts as well. You don't need to have giant accounts in order to show you know, 10, 20, 30 percent returns on your accounts. Uh, you can do that with relatively small size, but again, you, know, you have to know the ways. You have to understand the options you're playing in, and that's what we're here about. Uh, a little bit before we get started, too, you want to show them the new website a little bit? Just oh, give yeah, them a taste? Yeah, 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 we're yeah, going to yeah. show you a little taste of uh, what's to come, guys. Uh, so we've got a new site about to uh, about to pop up, and uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty fly. Okay, um, anybody who has inquiries can ask us whatever they want. They can join the crew. Uh, you know, we've got a bunch of services, and we've got a bunch of people also joining us in terms of uh, providing content and also with education too. Um, in addition to that, uh, what I want to make sure is that uh, we also have a special running with our. Uh, with our uh, market buy specials, uh, we currently have a four-day course that we run that costs usually 250 bucks. And uh, anybody who is interested in it, actually, we are running a special that's fifty dollars off going into uh, this Sunday. Let me just make sure that it's this Sunday that we have it for. And yes, it's this Sunday. So if anybody has any questions on that or wants to receive um, the fifty dollars special, make sure you type in early bird into the chat and we'll get you signed up immediately so you can get that special. Just to tell you a little bit about what it's about, uh, we give you the basic rundown on options. Okay, We're going to tell you about puts and calls. We're going to tell you about time decay. We're not going to get in the nitty-gritty of our actual strategy uh, because I know a lot of people out there want to just kind of apply uh, options to what they currently have, which is exactly what this class is for. Okay, It's set at a good price for where you, know, you yourself can uh, have access to us uh, we will also offer one-on-one -on -one consultations, so uh, it's something that I don't really like to do all the time, but we're going to be doing here, you guys are going to get a special here, is that you're going to have access to my freaking phone number, all right, and you can ask us any questions you want. Obviously, uh, we're going to be able to give you um, everything you need and make sure to address uh, all those questions. Um, in addition to this, guys, uh, make sure that, uh, you know, especially in this market, you know, we've got a lot of stuff going on with Cyprus. Obviously, the, uh, the headline risk is relatively high, and we're working into a lot of holiday season here. So be careful in the way you trade. Um, and uh, one thing to also throw in here before we get started, I want to throw out a poll out there so at least we know uh, we're going to do this for about 20 seconds. So go ahead and click around and tell us a little bit about your trading. You know, this gives us a better way of uh, operating a lot of these free webinars to make sure that we can address sort of the different spectrums of, uh, of options traders out here, whether you've been a, a long options trader for a while, um, if you're an advanced trader, or if you're just getting started. You know, this will allow us to uh, um, you know, pretty much give you uh, what you need here. Okay, So take a second. Uh, we're going to leave this open for about like 10, 15 seconds. I just want to make sure everybody answers our questions here. Um, in the meantime, uh, Lucci is going to get set up and we're going to start talking a little bit about his personal story and also how it applies to how you guys currently trade on how you guys can make it over the hurdle and become more profitable traders. Cool, cool. So listen, in order for us to share screen, we've got to close this poll. So we're going to leave it open for another you know, 10, 15 seconds here. So uh, while you guys fill in that, it looks like we have most traders here over a year. 46% here over a year. You guys, you got you have eighteen percent between three months and a year. So a lot of you guys, you know, have been trading for a considerable amount of time. There's a lot of newbies here too. A lot of newbies. All right. So what I want to do is start go. this off basically by giving you guys my spiel. And I'm going to pull up this spreadsheet because this was basically my life for a certain period of time. Now, obviously, it was a lot more detailed than this, um, but I want to go ahead and give you guys my story and what helped me become profitable. 
And then I want to go ahead and talk about certain issues that you guys might be having and, uh, you know, zero it in for you so that you guys can kind of pick exactly what to work on um, and, and, and kind of narrow it all down. And one of the things that you'll, you'll notice is kind of like a, a common theme among all, um, amongst all these things that we're going to talk about is simplicity. And I'm going to say that again. It's, it's simplicity. It's narrowing everything down to the point where you figure out what it is that, you know, you like to do to make money. And that's it. That's all you're going to do. You're going to cut out the rest of the garbage that you're doing. And you're going to focus on just one thing. And most traders can't do that because, again, there's mentality. There's psychology involved. And that psychology gets you to start doing a lot of things that you really didn't plan to do. So it opens up the door to over trading. It opens up the door to, uh, you know, being up on the day and then losing your profits. Uh, it opens up the door to all kinds of bad decision making. And that's all in your psychology. So let me give the spiel on, on my story and what helped me become profitable, okay? So what I did uh, for, like a, for, like a, for like six months straight, I want to say, um, and what I did was I, I, I took all the traders, I took all the trades of the head traders at my prop firm, right? So I would print them all out uh, at the end of the day. So basically the, uh, the head trader there would print out all these trades uh, and I could easily access these trades. And what I would do is I would go back in the time and sales to figure out, you know, what exactly they did. So let's say somebody shorted, uh, let's say somebody shorted Apple today, right? And let's say somebody shorted Apple off of this rip. You know, so what I would do is I would go back on the time and sales I would go back on the historical tape and I would look at exactly what trades they made. So basically, you know, it would, it would kind of look like a printout sort of like this. So you see all these orders here. These are all the orders that I made, you know, throughout the day. So I would have a printout of all these orders, right? And I would have, I would have this printout right next to my time in sales. And I would say, okay, they got in at exactly 9 whatever, 940 or 942 or something like that, right? And I would go back on the tape and I would figure out, okay, what, you know, and I would look around and I would say, okay, what got them into this thing? What was this buy doing? What was, you know, and I would start adding all this together and then I would go to their exit point. And then, let's say they, they, they got out over here, you know, an hour later. I would scroll all the way through the tape up until the point that they got out and I would see what they looked at on the tape. So that was basically me for the beginning. And again, like I didn't have an instructor, I didn't have a teacher and I didn't have a coach. So I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I, I just kind of figured, okay, you know, this seems like a good way to do it. And, um, and let me go ahead and just grind it out. Now, through all that, I figured out how to read tape. And then by that time, I knew how to make money. So after six months, I knew how to make money, you know, six or seven months around there. You know, my learning curve was there. I knew how to make money. I just didn't know how to keep it. I, I had no clue how to keep it. And, and, and what I realized, and again, you know, you might have heard me say this before, what I realized was that it, it wasn't about, it was never about the money. And it was about, it, it was going after the money that kind of put me at a disadvantage, right? Because again, at that time, I had bills to pay. You all got bills to pay. Everybody knows, everybody has bills to pay. Um, you know, and, and, and so what would happen was I would design these spreadsheets, right? And obviously this is a little inaccurate because there's weekends here involved every seven days. Um, you know, I would design these spreadsheets and I would say, okay, if I make $500 a day, I'll come out at the end of the month with, with $6,000 to $10,000 and I'll be good. That's all I got to do. I got, I'll, that's all I got to do. All I got to do is come in and make $500 a day. I knew how to make the money. Uh, but there was other issues that I wasn't accounting for. And you want to know what that was, what those issues stemmed from? Those issues stemmed from your psychology. It stemmed from if there was money to make uh, uh, that particular day, you know? So your particular strategy, maybe it's scalping or maybe it's a, a swing trading or whatever the case it is, your strategy might not be working for that particular environment. And you're still forcing the same trades, even though the market is telling you straight up like, yo, dude, this is not working. This is not working. And you, you need to chill out. You need to stop hitting this button. Now, the market will tell you that over and over again, but you're not going to listen because what are, you, what, are you, what are you looking at? You're looking at this. You're looking at this and the fact that you need to make this at the end of the month. So, damn, you know, I got to pay my bills. I got to do all this kind of stuff. So this is what I need to make. And, and that's it. That's all I was thinking about. All I was thinking about was how much money I needed to make. But the problem was, I didn't realize that 
you know, I didn't, I didn't think about it that the market doesn't give a shit. It doesn't, it doesn't care what you need to make. It doesn't, it doesn't care about your bills. It doesn't care about your problems. It doesn't care about anything. Okay, it just is what it is. It just is. It's just there. Okay, so again, your instincts. Once you're at the point where you've been trading for a year, guys, you know how to make money. You know, forty-seven percent of you here have have been trading for more than a year. You know what that tells me? That tells me all of you guys know how to make money, but there's a little disconnect between you actually taking that money home. Now, go ahead and say yes in the question box if I'm right here. Okay. Uh, options trader is saying, I, I don't know if it's ever been asked, but did you have trading experience prior to going to the prop firm? I had zero. I didn't even know what, uh, you know, what an option was. I didn't know anything. So I had zero idea of what, of what was going on. I had zero idea of how to buy anything. I had zero idea of what the hell a level two was or a time in sales. I didn't know, I didn't know jack, all right? Um, you know, so my learning curve was like six months to about eight months. The problem was, was that I kept, I kept thinking about the money. I kept thinking about the money. So I would make, let's say, a grand in a day or 2,000 in a day, but I'd give it all back. And you want to know why? Because I'm going for more money. I would, I would keep going for more money. So when I was up, I kept going for more money. When I was down, I kept trying to make that money back and then, and then dug a bigger hole, right? How many of you guys have done that? So all of a sudden you're down 500. You want to get back to zero, but then you end up closing out the day down, you know, $1,000 to $2,000. How many of you guys have done that? Go ahead and say yes in the question box. And again, if, if half the people in here don't say yes, you guys are a bunch of lying, lying dudes, all right? Um, you know, and again, these are the natural things that we all do and we all have done. We all have done this stuff, okay? And everybody is saying yes here. And again, like, you, I'm no different here. I am no different. I just might do it slightly, I just might be able to control it slightly better uh, than, 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 than all of you guys, or, or majority of you guys, okay? And that's, that's really the only difference. And it's all about your mentality. So guys, when I started making money, you know what I did? I scrapped this whole thing. I, I totally forgot about it. I said, screw this. Screw coming up with a dollar amount every single day, and screw having a dollar goal uh, for the end of the month. These were the things that were ruining my mentality going into the trade. By the way, if you guys are watching Apple this right Apple now, just hit 440 just now. Oh this Apple is getting smoked here. So anyways, <laughs> so, sorry about that. Um, so, so, um, so what happened was, was that the dollar was driving me. The making money was driving me. And obviously, rightly so, because we all have lives. We all have things that we have to take care of, right? You got to buy baby formula. You got to buy, uh, you know, you got to pay for rent. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta take your girl out. You gotta do all kinds of stuff, right? Take your girl out. And you, know, you, you have to take your girl out, man, because you know you gotta do it, right? So all these things were driving me, and finally it took me, it took me a while just to realize that holy crap, you know the market doesn't care about any of this stuff, and and it's just there for if there's a trade there, if there's something that I can make on, great. If there's not then why am I trading this? What am I doing here? Why, why am I trading this? And why do I feel like I have to trade it, right? Why do I feel like I have to force these things? And it always because of, of the money. It was always because of the money. I gotta make $500 a day. I gotta make $1,000 a day so that I can end up the month at 10 grand here and I can pay out 5,000 here and then I can, I can pay back my father $2,000 I took from him and all that bullshit that you guys have uh, in the back of your head while you're making a trade, that stuff really guides your decisions, okay? A lot of you might not want to admit it, but in reality, that's, a lot of that stuff is what guides your decisions, okay? And I'm not saying it doesn't happen to me. I've wanted to make a seven-figure trade for the past two years, and it still hasn't happened. It still hasn't happened. You know, I'm motivated by that. Oftentimes, I don't take a lot of profits. That Apple the other day when it went to, um, uh, let's see, what, what, what was that? Up and we had yeah, this one right here, guys. This one right here. I'm up 160 grand on this thing, right? And the market at that time was looking great. If you took a look at the, uh, you know, at the market, we were ripping. You know, everything else was 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 moving higher. And then all of a sudden, we just dropped. We just completely dropped out. And I'm and I'm just sitting there staring at it, like, what the hell just happened? You know what I mean? And it looked too good to be true. And, and again, I was late on getting out, and I ended up taking a small loss on that, you know, instead of booking $160,000 in gains. So I have similar issues, okay? We all have these issues. The problem is, is that you have to narrow it down. You have to zero down on one or two things 
that you feel like is the root or cause of why your psychology is not in the right place or why your mentality is not in the right place. For me, in order to turn the, the, to turn the learning curve, or whatever, however you want to call it, to turn the corner here in my trading, I scrapped all of this. I scrapped all of this. I no longer had a spreadsheet and I no longer cared. All I cared about was this. All I cared about was my time in sales. If she showed me I had a trade, then damn it, I had a trade. And then, you know what else I did? I cut down the number of stocks that I was looking at. I cut, I cut them down like crazy. Before at the prop firm, I was looking at hundreds of stocks. I was trying to be in everything. I was trying to be involved in everything. And if I missed something, I was so mad about it, I was so upset about it, it affected the way I traded the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the week after that, right? And I kept thinking about these things. And you, you, you overcomplicate a lot of scenarios when you're trading, okay? Simply because there's so many dynamics that are influencing your emotions, okay? Whether it's you missing a trade, whether it's you missing an exit, whether it's you turning a, a trade that went from profitability down to a loss, okay? All these little things are pushing you, and, and they're, they're, they're kind of prodding you. Okay, and they're prodding your emotions, and then eventually your emotions come pouring out, and you start making some dumb decisions. Okay, and again, the root of it all for me was the money. I want, I was after the money, but I didn't realize that going after the money was what was holding me back. It what was it, it's exactly what was holding me back. Me needing to make a check every single month, or me needing to make five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars every single day, or me needing to make two thousand dollars every single day. Okay. That is what hold, what that is what held me back for months. Okay, finally after a year and a half, I was I was really starting to make money. You want to know why? Because I would I would take it a lot slower. I would wait for bigger picture moves, uh, uh, easier moves, right? So so stuff that to me uh, everything moved uh, together. So for example, if the market was making a big big move higher, everything was kind of going with it. So for example, you know fiscal cliff gets solved. And then all of a sudden we're on this big high and, and every single stock you take a look at is rallying, you know, Google's and, and, and all this kind of stuff is rallying. So, you know, you just kind of had to throw a, throw a dart and, and just pick the right sector and boom, you know, you'd have some cash. Um, you know, these were the kind of moves that I went for. I cut down on everything else. I cut down on all those crappy five cent, ten cent scalps. I was like, you know what, in reality, if I make a hundred of these ten cent scalps, Chances are I'll come out with break even or even a loss after commissions. So what the hell am I going after this stuff for? You know. So it's really narrowing down on what you do well, and then starting to understand your your own psychological process. What makes you tick? What is what again? What is making you uh, uh, over trade? What is forcing you to trade? All those kind of things. You really have to step. You really have to kind of, uh, 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 I guess, I guess, look outside of yourself. Um, and, and, and try to figure out the inner workings of what makes you tick. And just to add to that, guys, uh, we've had a lot of previous uh, uh, discussions on the psychology of trading and the issues of the mind and how, in the very end, it's all about how you are projecting your emotions onto the, uh, into the market. Okay? That's the right. way you're going to display your trading. Right. And unfortunately, uh, with all the all the problems out in the world, the real world out there that's outside of trading are really going to affect the way you trade. So a lot of times the thing that we preach is to simplify. And when we say by simplify, we're literally saying don't trade when the setup's not there for you. You know, if you are good at dip buying, wait for the dip buying environment. You know, a lot of times what you have to do is to be able to kind of sit and say, hey, I can't make money today. This is not my environment. Therefore, I should sit out. You know, and a lot of good things, you know, a lot of good traders out there, they don't trade every freaking day. They actually only trade once or twice uh, a week. You know, I know of funds out there that all actually only trade one or two months out of the entire year, and their P&Ls are above 30%, 40% because, again, you know, they know when to employ their money. They know when, uh, when not to trade, too. And, you know, um, today is a perfect example, you know, where it's a short week, and the entire spy was ramping, but if you look under your hood, what was actually moving? Could you have made that much money on a long today if you weren't playing the spies? That's questionable. You know, these are things that you have to assess about the way you trade and also the environment that's surrounding you. Right, right. Um, so yeah, definitely. So, so guys, I wanna I wanna explain to you when I was on my 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 top my top game. Right? Any any you know, sports guy or any guy who, who, who does things like we do, you know, trading or, or whatever it is that, that is real, uh, uh, you know, difficult gambling type kind of thing, 
um, you know, high intensity kind of job, um, you know, we all have, we all reflect on those periods that, you know, we, we just had it, right? We just had it. We just, we just, it was, it was, it was, it was just, it was just on. We were, we were, we were unstoppable. And I, and I, and I want to show you that time uh, in my experience, okay? And what were the things that I was doing uh, in that time period that allowed me to, to achieve the level of success that I did and is what is driving me to, to again get back there, to somehow get back there. And I am getting close. I am getting close. Uh, so back in, again, back in 2009, what I was doing was I was swinging just one stock, guys. I would pick one stock. One stock and I would trade it for weeks, all right, sometimes even a month. Just one. That's it. Just one. And I would, and I would just plug in and out with small size, small size here and there just to figure it out. Usually back then it was on the banks, you know, the Bank of America, the Citigroups, the Goldman Sachs. Sometimes it was Potash. She was a great trade back in the day. Um, you know, it was, it was stocks like this, this LBS2, uh, even this X. Um, you know, and I would just watch one stock. That's it for weeks. And finally, it would just sit in, you know, all these stocks would sit in these big consolidation ranges. I would try to anticipate, like, okay, where is it going to come out of that range? I would wait, I would wait, I would wait, I would wait, and I would watch the tape every single day. I didn't care what anything else was doing. If somebody else made double their money in, 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 in whatever, Priceline, or I, I didn't give a shit. I didn't care. It didn't matter to me because, you want to know why? I, was, I knew, I knew that if I caught my move in that one stock, it didn't matter. I was making a half, I was going to make, a, I was going to pull out a half a million in that trade anyway. I was going to pull out 250000 in that trade anyway. That's all I needed to do. So I cut out everything. I literally cut out everything, right? And I blocked, I blocked, I blocked everybody. I blocked the news. I blocked, I blocked everything, okay? I blocked what, what other stocks were doing. I didn't care. Obviously, I was watching these other stocks, but I detached myself from wanting to be a part of it, which is, again, very complicated to do because I know all of you guys here are, again, you want to trade everything, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, you know, and you really get upset if you miss uh, uh, you know, moves that, that you, know, you think you should have gotten. But in reality, if you weren't watching for them in the first place, then what the hell are you bitching for? What are you, what are you, what are you bitching for? You missed them? You weren't even watching for it in the first place. So why, you know, why are you getting upset? And it was really keeping track of your emotions and really making sure that you're staying uh, you know, on an even playing field. And you're saying, you know what? It doesn't matter to me. You know, all this stuff does not matter to me. As long as I catch my move, in whatever stock that I'm looking at, a 50 cents in Bank of America at that time, that was going to make me double and it would make me, you know, a quarter million dollars or $300,000. If I had one of those trades, I'm good. I'm good. I'm clean. You know, by the end of the year, you know, I'd have, I'd be sitting on over a million dollars. Um, and that was when I was on uh, uh, my, my, my game. That was on, that was when I was on top of my game because I started to look at the market more uh, rationally to the point where it was like, okay, you know, I know I can do one thing, and I know I can do one thing very well. I don't care what anything else is going on. And you know what? Yeah, I could be making money over there, but who cares? Who cares if I could be making money over there or with that strategy? I don't care. I don't care anymore, all right? Because I know what I'm good at. I'm going to stick to this, and I'm going to wait until I catch my move. Once I catch my move, boom, that's it. That's all I need, right? So I was able to detach myself from needing to trade every single second, every single minute, every single hour, and every single day, okay? Which again, a lot of you guys are having issues with, and that's one of the major reasons why, you know, you'll have a good, you'll be on a good streak, and then you'll be, you, you, you know, you'll throw half your profits back, okay? So I'm still trying to get to where I was back in 2009. I am almost there. I am very close. And, and, you know, and, and, and that's, kind of, that's kind of my story. That's how I uh, uh, got over the hump, you know, and really started to understand how to make money in these markets and how to keep it, more or less how to, how to keep it, okay? And how another, to keep it. And another big takeaway from this, guys, is that, uh, like we were just saying, you, know, you can follow all types of different trading gurus and all this kind of stuff all around, okay? You can find every strategy out there, I guarantee you, you will be able to make money with it, okay? Indeed. But the problem is, are you going to spend, you know, the majority of your trading like bouncing around from strategy to strategy, or are you actually going to focus on something and really it's too stressful? It, it's too know? stressful. Um, and having a guru in general, guys, is a way for you to is a way for you to not take responsibility for your trades. All Indeed. of you out there that are like 
chasing trades that you see on Twitter, um, you know, like going after trades that somebody else posts out, that's great and everything, but, you know, is that really scalable? Can you really get anywhere with that? You know, are you really, you got to think about, you know, what are you doing with trading? Are you really trying to make a million bucks or are you just messing around with your 401k right now? And, you know, when you find that answer, you're going to realize that you have to take responsibility. And for you to take responsibility, uh, it's pretty tough, okay? You have to be able to sit back and realize that this environment and the, vi and the environment 10 years ago, five years from now, is, is all going to be different. You know, the time for you to make money will be there. You just have to be ready to put the risk on when that time comes. In the meantime, stop bouncing around and not focusing. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, what I want to do now is narrow down on a couple of things that, um, you know, again, that I, that I feel like everybody kind of, you know, uh, uh, displays as sort of a characteristic here. I mean, one thing that I really do see often is that, you know, a, a lot of you guys are trying several different strategies, okay? You, you guys might be trading, you know, one day you, you guys might be trading these, uh, these, these freaking penny stocks, and then all of a sudden you got you got you got Apple positions, right? You got options sitting around in Apple, right? So you're trading FNMA, and then you're trying to you, you're you're trying to grab a call option in Apple, which moves, by the way, uh, you know, within fractions of a second. Okay, you guys are trying. A lot of you guys try to do way way too much. You try to do way too much. To my guys and to all my subscribers, I have I talk about four or five stocks every single day. That is it. I mean, again, what you guys choose to trade is your own business. But again, you don't need you don't you do not need all that. And again, if you're if you are scalping and you need you know baskets and baskets of stocks here to trade because you know oftentimes most stocks aren't aren't doing anything, so you really need to be cued in on on what's moving. Scalping, I do understand, but when you're scalping, your commissions go through the roof. Your commissions go through the roof. There's guys I know who who pull down fifteen thousand dollars gross. But they come out with two grand at the end of the month. You you tell me the sense in that, right? So you make fifteen grand gross, but your commissions take away thirteen thousand dollars because you scalp your way to insanity. Come on, man. Come on. That's again. It's just not smart. It doesn't make sense. Okay. So you really have to break your trading down into what works for you and what you like doing and what seems easier for you. And that's it. That's it. You got to start cutting out a lot of the fat, okay? Which, which again, I don't see a lot of traders doing. Um, you know, a lot of traders are all over the place. You guys want to trade pennies. You guys want to trade iron condors. You guys want to. You guys want to. You guys want to play earnings. Half the half the people out here are still playing earnings, and then you're complaining the next day when you just lost all your money because this thing didn't didn't do what you wanted to do. Like, come on, come on. Start being rational about it, and you got to start cutting out some of the fat here. Some of the trades that, again. You know, you just feel like you're hopping in because because your emotions are running high, or you feel like everybody else is doing it, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so this is really zeroing in on your own personality and how you trade and what works for you, and that's it. That's all I want you guys to do. So if you guys are good at let's say a uh, uh, selling uh, uh, breakouts, let's say, or, or or shorting rips on stocks like this Apple, you know, then that's great. Then that's what you're gonna do. You know, you're gonna look for stocks that are toppy or, 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 you know, maybe overbought or whatever, and you're going to short the piss out of these things. So maybe it's MasterCard for you. I don't know. Whatever the case may be is that that's what I want you to do. That's what I want you to focus on versus, again, listening to Twitter, listening to, you know, some of you guys are, are subscribed to four different gurus. Where the hell is that going to get you? What do you want? All these ideas to feed into your email box? And then what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna trade all of them? Come on. Let's be serious here. I send you an options alert. You're 20 minutes late. Your ass is getting smoked. I'm selling to you. Come on. Where is the rat? Where is the sense in that? Okay. So there's a lot of dumb things that I see. You know, a lot of new traders doing uh, simply because you know they, they 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 got hit with the bug. You know, you you, you get hit with the trading bug, and you just want to be there. You just want to be there every single day, and you want to make money every single day. Um, you know, and this is nonsense. This is a lot of nonsense. Okay. And, and again, what I want you to do is we got to drill down on something specific, okay? Something specific that you feel is, again, turning your trading or, 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 or throwing a lot of your money away. So let's say, for example, you're up a solid chunk on the month and you start going after things with a lot more size. And again, Pete and I are going to talk to you about this in a second, okay? So, uh, or let's say you're over trading. Or, you know, let's say you're, uh, you're scalping way too much and you're churning way too many contracts or whatever the case may be. 
I want you to figure, I want you to take one thing, okay, one thing, one of the most important things that you really feel is uh, holding you back from becoming profitable. And, and trust me, guys, you know exactly what it is, whether it's over trading, whether it's this or that, you guys know exactly what it is. And I guarantee you the root of that, the root of that is pretty similar across all of you. So whether it's that you're motivated by the money or whether it's you're too uh, uh, quick on the keys or you're too easy to get into a trade, you don't have enough scrutiny, let's say, on a particular trade. Um, you know, you just want to hop in everything at the same time. So a lot of it is about you assessing your own psychology when you actually are trading. Okay, but I want you to pick one thing, uh, you know, whether it's over trading, and then start working on that. Okay, what I want you guys to do is you, you, you got to start tricking your mind. Okay, your mind is going to do the same shit every single day. So you're going to come in every single day. If your problem is over trading, you're going to over trade every single day until it hurts that much that you feel like you need to do something with it, okay? That's the human, that's, that is the human behavior at the root, okay? And what it is is that we, all, we need to feel the wrath. We need to feel the wrath before we do something about it, okay? And that sucks because in reality, you know, you, so what are you telling me? I got I to gotta burn my whole account, you know, in order to, 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 to get over the hump? You got to fight it. You have to fight it. You got to trick your mind into doing other things. So if your problem is over trading, take a day off. Purposely just take a freaking day off, a complete day off, all right? And that will literally, you will, you, will you will feel yourself changing by the next day. You'll be like, wow, wow, it's really not that big of a deal to take a day off, you know? And actually, it's, it's, it's cool, you know? And, and it would kind of bring you back down to earth and realize that, okay, you know, I don't have to be attached to this stuff every day. You know, I don't have to press the button all the time, all the time. I can really scrutinize what I'm trading, okay? But in reality, when you're sitting there in front of the computer and you're looking at stuff move, you want to be a part of it. So you need to trick your mind into not doing that, into not doing what it's used to do, what, it, what, what, it, what it's used to doing, okay? Again, we're all programmed already. You guys are all programmed already. So whatever you're messing up in, you're going to continue to mess up on that until you feel the wrath. Or you can trick your mind and start and start doing the opposite. Start doing something that, that, again, will just throw your mind completely off, okay? And again, it's a battle here. It's you against your own mind, all right? I do it a little better, and, and again, that's all you need. You, you don't need to be 100%. Fact is, you're never going to be 100%. You will never be 100% unless you're a computer, okay? In which case, you don't have a mind, all right? But you're not. You're not. You're a human. So therefore, these are the issues that you are going to be having no matter how long you are a, a trader. I've been doing this for years, and I still have those issues, okay? But, again, I still come out profitable because I can manage it, all right? I can manage it, all right? Uh, so, real quick, uh, Pete and I want to talk to you about sizing up. This is another big issue uh, for traders who, let's say, got over the hump a little bit, and, and you know, you're, you're, you're now starting to get a little confidence, and you sized up, and all of a sudden, the market just smacked the hell out of you, and you're right back where you started. There's a lot of you guys out there. And again, I was one of them. So when you size up, guys, this is an issue because your stomach is not ready to take the losses that you're going to take when you size up. Okay? So it's about stomach tolerance, right? And I'll, 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 I'll give you the whole scenario when I started out. When I started out, guys, I was making like 25 bucks in a day, right? And I'd be happy. I'd be like super happy. Like, whoa, dude, dude. Pete, five bucks. Dude, I made twenty-five dollars today, man. Yes, yes. You know, and then you start, you start moving up, right? Because at the prop firm, you get restricted on how many shares you can trade, right? So I, I, I was restricted down to hundred shares. So I needed to show the firm that you know I could trade and I could make a little bit of money. I wasn't, you know, hemorrhaging money. And then they'll go ahead and step up my risk. So I went up to two hundred shares, you know, then to three hundred shares, four hundred, five hundred, you know, and then to a thousand. Okay. So, so what would happen is every time I transitioned up and I started to trade a little bit higher, you would take bigger losses, right, that your stomach is not ready for. And I call it stomach tolerance, right? So, you know, you, you were just not ready to take that loss. And when you took that loss, it, it kind of brought you back down. It brought you back down to earth and you felt like, okay, what the hell do I do now? So now you size back down, you go back to what you're doing. And this whole cycle just kind of perpetuates itself, and you never really get over the hump to trading a lot of size, okay? Um, and one of the tricks is, guys, again, 
you think about the money. You think about the money way too much. And I know it's very difficult to not think about the money. I know it's almost damn near impossible because we're in this game to make freaking money. So what the hell are you talking about? Don't tell me about, you know, not thinking about the money. Um, you know, that's, that's exactly what I'm telling you about because in reality, let's say you size up, right, and you take a big loser or you take a bigger loser than what you could have, um, you know, than, than, than what you're used to. Okay, but that's just the name of the game. If you're gonna if you're gonna play bigger, you have to be ready to accept those losses, and you have to look at those losses and say, "Hey, you know what? This is good. This is good." You you know look at it from a positive perspective, and you when you when you make those winners on the bigger size, trust me, it's gonna it's gonna come back, and you know you're gonna clean up all those losses. Pete, you want to add anything on sizing up? In, in general, guys, like. It's it's really freaking tough, especially if your first couple trades are are losers, because yeah. you're gonna tell yourself, oh yeah. man, now I gotta start small again, and now you're in this vicious cycle where every time right. you go bigger, you're gonna lose, you know. And honestly, you, again, you have to be able to tell yourself um, the best way to handle it is honestly you wait for the best setups to come to you, All right? Make sure that your foundation is good. If you have a good foundation, you know you can slowly start sizing up, you know. Don't take too much risk at one point, you know. Um, and again, it's all about when the environment is right for your type of trading, put the risk on, all right. The rest of the time, don't be careless, all right. One of the biggest things is don't start being careless and be like, oh, I can average in one more time, and then average it again, and then average it again, and then all of a sudden you've averaged in eight times. I do that. And you're all like time. five times the size that you're supposed to be, and then you're going out for a loss. You know, if those are things. Again, you want to make sure you establish rules for yourself psychologically uh, when you're going into sizing up. It's very, very difficult. We could have a whole entire topic yeah. on sizing up, actually. That's yeah, like, we definitely could. Deal. We definitely could. And, and, and I've done it myself, you know, since we started this hedge fund. Um, you know, I've had to go through the same swings and the same learning curve that we're talking about right now. It sucks. Know? It literally it sucks. makes the entire house suck it sucks, when man. we go through these losses of sizing up. But, yeah. you know... Losing and you know losing money as long as you keep your account alive and you have yes. you, you know trading is a war of attrition okay the better that you can understand yourself and the more you treat losses as a uh, as a um, as a cost of doing business like we uh, we like to put it the more you all start understanding that okay that loss there was a way for me to learn about myself and how I'm projecting myself in these trades and adjust that. A Indeed, indeed. And in reality, guys, we're all arrogant. I mean, anybody who thinks that they can, they, they can do trading or anybody who thinks they can make money trading, you've got to be an arrogant son of a bitch in reality. Um, you know, and there's a lot of people that, that you know, they, 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 they have these strategies that they can skate by with, uh, you know, with decent money every single month. Um, I've seen some of these traders and, and, you know, I'm surprised because, you know, the, the itch always gets to me, you know, the, the, the itch that I need to scratch always gets to me. So, for example, you know, um, you know, if I'm coasting by, let's say, writing options every single week and making, you know, a couple thousand dollars every single week, it, pretty soon I'm going to get bored with that, you know, and, and, and that's the kind of business we're in, you know, you always want to strive to be better. You always want to, uh, you know, come back strong from a loss and all these things. It's a very, very emotional business. And that's why a lot of you guys can't get over the hump because your emotions, it is what, it's, it's what's holding you back, okay? So we're not here to give you the, 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 the all ending uh, way here to get to profitability. And again, there is none, all right? You guys are out here looking for golden nuggets, signing up to gurus that have no idea what the hell they're talking about. I mean, you know, there is... There, there isn't that golden nugget here, okay? It takes work. It takes work. It takes you understanding what you're good at. It takes you understanding what your abilities are, what you're not good at, okay? And then once you figure that out, that's it. That's all you're going to do, okay? For me, I was after the big money. So so no matter what, whatever I felt like at the time was the big money, uh, that's what I was going to do. So now, you know, now the markets have changed and now you've got to adjust, you know? A lot of the big money is now in writing a lot of options, Okay. Um, and, and, and that's kind of, that's, that's kind of where we're at. Um, Ralph, hey, anything you, else? if you're not here for psychology and you want to hear what we want to sell, uh, we've got courses for you, but <laughs> again, if you guys are interested in courses, shoot us an email, Lucci at St. Well, why don't you, you know, um, send it out, I'll send out the link to everybody yeah, so you guys can have it. Um, again, you know, this is, you know, we, we should actually wrap this up. This is pretty much, uh, yeah, we'll take we some questions. We'll, we'll, take, we'll, some we'll questions. take some questions, but guys, this is where... Pretty much, again, you know, we want to address 
you know, how you guys can really mitigate your losses and how you guys can sort of get over the hump of uh, getting stuck in trading. Uh, right. We've got somebody clamoring here for for what we want to sell. So we'll, All right, guys, so we're going to we're gonna go ahead and take some questions. Uh, Sahil is asking, when did we start the hedge fund? We started a year ago, man. We started a year ago. Um, questions, guys, questions. Tell me where you guys are in your trading right now. Like, what is the big issue for you? Um, and, you know, and, and does this help? Does this put things into perspective for you? Okay, the main thing is, is that I don't want you to go back to trading tomorrow doing the same shit, all right? That's, that's not what you need to be doing, okay? You need to challenge yourself to do something else, okay? You need to force yourself to do something else so your mind is like, aha, it doesn't have to be that way, okay? Your mind is a funny thing. It gets into these routines, and that's it. That's it, okay? That's all your mind wants to hear, or that's all your mind is going to do, all right? They're going to do one thing, and, and whatever you're messing up on, that's it. That's all you're going to do. So you need to start tricking your own mind here, guys, all right? Uh, Charles is asking, do you trade every day or only when you see setups? Right now, I trade every day like a dumbass. Uh, Denny is saying, slowly sinking in. Yes, over trading here. Good. AK is saying, a big issue for me is making good uh, days great. I uh, usually stop trading after I rack up a few winners. AK, that's not a bad problem to have. Uh, but, again, I see what you're saying because, obviously, you you – you're probably letting a lot of, uh, of winners go without you. So, you know, you'll book them pretty quickly and you won't, um, you know, take them for as much as you should. Uh, in reality, that's still, you know, that's still an emotional thing as well. So you have probably an issue with uh, being up and then going back down. You don't want to turn it into a loser, so you're just quick to take it. Uh, again, that's going to take some forcing. And for me... Tape is tape. If the tape is not telling you to get out, what the hell are you doing getting out? Um, uh, let's see. Zach is saying, start it out. How much would be a good minimum to have an account and how much should go on each trade? I've heard 20%. Zach, that is a personal thing. Okay? So, again, you're looking at it from the perspective of money management, right, and risk management. So you're looking at all these books and they're saying you should start with X, Y, and Z and uh, you should put one-fifth of your account or one-tenth of your account in each trade. Bullshit, all right? All of that stuff is garbage. Again, you got to figure out what strategy works for you first, and then and then you figure out, okay, you know, okay, I'm only going to risk X, Y, and Z. Me, if I see something I like, it doesn't matter how much I'm in. I could be in with 50% of my account. It doesn't matter because the trade is telling me, okay, this is good, and I'm in. I don't care. I don't have a dollar amount. Again, when you put those dollar amounts on me, I tend to not uh, – uh, um, I guess respect them, so to speak. It tends to get in my head, and then it messes with my trade. So I can't have any of those restrictions in my head whatsoever. Okay? You might be different. Again, things might be different for you. All right? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, your website displaying content with security certificate error, uh, errors. I don't know what it is. Pete, you got them? I just sent you the link to the storefront. Uh, make sure you check that out. You're going to have to have a MarketFi account to get it. Yeah. Uh, do you have more success in writing options or buying options? You will always have more success in writing options. I'll tell you that right now. Buying options, the percentages are against you. Uh, but again, that's where tape reading comes in, and that's what we teach our class on, uh, strictly strictly tape reading uh, and market timing. So when you want to buy options, you need to be able to make damn sure um, you know, your timing is on point. That's the problem. Again, that's a big issue for a lot of options traders. Again, if you're going long calls and long puts, most of the time you ain't ending up on the good side of it because, you know, there's a lot of fake outs in this market. There's a lot of up and down activity. You end up taking a loss, your option goes, goes you know, without you, okay? That's oftentimes what does happen. So always you will have more success writing options than you buy. That's, that's statistics. Um, uh, Mike is saying, I just suck. Everything I touch goes down. Obviously, can't read the tape. Mike, you might need to decide. You might need to assess if you should be doing this at all. Um, let's see. You using stops? No, absolutely not. Uh, market makers know where your stops are. Again, uh, I trade based on instinct. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There's a good question here on um, 
the one point two million dollar trade at Citigroup, did you have problems closing that position out? No, no. So here's the deal, Mike. Uh, when you get, you got to sell into strength, right? So as the thing was going up, as long as your timing is right, you're not going to have any issues whatsoever closing that, closing large positions. As long as your timing is right, if you get your move, there's plenty of buyers that want to get into it, and there's plenty of retail suckers at the top end of the move that you can sell to. Uh, you know, so so as long as you're selling all the way up, you are good. But your timing has to be on point if you're going to trade options. If you are going to trade options and you don't know about timing, or you know, or, or you don't, you know, you don't do filler trades to test something out before you get in heavy, you're going to get smoked. Uh, Sahil is saying, bit of a silly question, but what's the best way to explore determining what your strategy is? Well, Sahil, you got to you got to try stuff. You know, you got to try stuff. So so if you've tried penny stocks before. And you haven't had much success. Um, a lot of people, by the way, a lot of people are just uh, uh, very fickle. Uh, uh, and again, you, you see this in life too. You know, you, you know that guy who always comes around and has these great ideas, but he just sits on his ass all the time and never does shit with him. That's that's a lot what traders are as well. So you you might pick up a strategy, and if it doesn't work for you right away, you're gonna flop over to the next one. So you try penny stocks, it doesn't work. So you go to options, it doesn't work. Then you go back to equities, it doesn't work. You scalp, it doesn't work. You go to swing, it doesn't work. But you're not giving these enough time. You're not giving them enough time and enough uh, effort. Okay. So if, for example, if if you know you started out as a penny stock um, and it, and it didn't work and you moved over, moved over to options, what your strategy is 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 it's going to be an aha moment. It's going to be an aha moment when you finally take a trade and you're like, wow, that looked clean. Everything's set up correctly. Um, and that and that was good. I think I can replicate that. Whatever you think you can replicate and still make money, that that is your strategy. That Guys, is your strategy. we actually have to start wrapping this up a little bit. Well, I, there's a couple questions about uh, you know how we get in and out of stocks. And just one big sweeping answer for that for you guys is honestly it's tape reading. Okay, we have yeah. an advanced course on tape reading. It's very tough to do. Okay, I would say the majority of people that try to learn tape reading cannot do it. Okay, but we want to. You know, we have a course on that. When we get in and when we get out, it's all about tape reading. It's all about how we see the tape, if there's buyers or sellers in there. Ultimately, again, this, this market is an auction process. Okay, If you don't understand how stocks are auctioned for buyers and sellers, you're not going to understand how to get in and out effectively, and you're going to rely on indicators too much. Okay, And that's sort of where we, uh, and that's sort of our big forte, and that's the reason why we're able to um, keep on scaling up because, you know, tape reading is the inherent nature of all trading in general, okay? Time and sales and bidders and offers, okay? Um, just again, guys, really want to thank you guys for coming in here and uh, checking out the webinar. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email, lucci at sanglucci.com. Check out our website, sanglucci.com. Check out Market by Product. Um, make sure that you guys hit us up. Really appreciate you guys having here. Um, it's a long weekend. It's spring. It's finally warming up a little We're bit. We're going Thank to get God. drunk, guys. We are going to get drunk. We are going uh, to get uh, wasted. A, li a little bit of that. We are going to celebrate a little bit. So, guys, um, again, uh, thanks for coming in. This is Sanglucci. Uh, over and out. All right, guys. Have a good All evening. Right. Have a good weekend. We'll see you back on uh, Monday in the Twitterverse, guys. Ciao.